And today, because of your prayers, because of your giving and because of your serving, today is our first time filming our service. So church, can you help me welcome everybody that'll be viewing this? Hey, we love you. We want to tell you that you may have found us on YouTube, but we're praying for you. We know the situation you're in that only God can solve. And you found us because you're searching for an answer. And listen, if you're uh, far away today, we want to encourage you and impart a truth into you. But if you live in the area, if you live in Houston, Texas, go to our website, look at our service times. We'd love to host you and your family and meet you real soon. Hey, listen, I want to tell you that it also doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter what you struggle with. It doesn't matter what your present doubts are. We, we believe that this is the place to be amongst family in this house. And I want to tell you that, you know, for some of you, you may have been invited here by a friend or a family. They told you, hey, there's this loud, crazy pastor, and he likes to yell and scream, and they got an amazing worship team, and, you know, that it's warm and loving. I got to tell you, those are the things are all true. And you may have seen some of our social media posts, which is why you found us on YouTube. But I got to tell you that it is God that has brought you here in his God-divined plan. He's brought you here. He sat you here. And today, he is going to give you a new encouragement, new word for your life. There's a plan and a purpose today. And the fact that you are here not only makes you a guest of honor, but evidence that God is faithful to all our prayers, to all our giving, and to all our servanthood. Amen. Today we begin a sermon series that I love to do. It's called I Love HCX. We completely took this hashtag three plus years ago and we absolutely layered it on every Instagram post we could and we we declared we can't trademark it but if you try to take our hashtag we're gonna call you out sorry hashtag because it's the vision of this house it's the heart of this family for our city I gotta tell you that we love to share the gospel and I believe that today as many of you have walked in and you haven't heard the gospel before, you've heard a, a messed up version of the gospel, today there's going to be some clarity brought to you. And I just know that God has a special message for you. I, I think today he wants to speak to you because you felt like you don't belong. You felt far away from him. And today he's trying to tell you that you've had family. You just hadn't found it. But today I believe God's going to speak to you and you're coming into this family. Three weeks ago, I took a, a trip of a lifetime. I was uh, honored to ask to, be go, to go to Turkey, uh, to the Middle East, um, uh, a country that's very Muslim, uh, but very European. It's very unique. It's beautiful, beautiful rivers, beautiful water, amazing food. I gained about five pounds while I was there. It seemed like all I was doing was eating all the time, and I couldn't pass up all the food, of course. Um, it, it was amazing. And, you know, I got to spend some time and preach to a bunch of leaders at a conference and spend time with leaders and building them. And, you know, it's a church that 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 is God is building throughout the Middle East, underground churches in Iran. And, and today I, I want to help you. Can you help me welcome my brother, Sam? Sam, would you stand up for me? He was this is Sam. He took that trip with me. He was my interpreter. He tried to keep up with Pastor Rod when he was shouting and yelling and screaming. He was sweating at the end of the sermon. I think he got saved again at the end of that sermon too. <laughs> we had a blast. Can I tell you what is taking place in Iran is nothing short of revival. We are a house. We are a family that's called to see this revival through. Jesus is revealing himself in a Muslim country to Muslim people in their dreams, in visions. Sam is proof of that. And listen, in this beautiful country that the media will tell you is the enemy and there's all these Muslims, Jesus is infiltrating he's having his way with his people and so while I was there I can't help but think of 
Obviously, I've thought about Sam quite a bit. But I can't help but think of my brother Masood. Masood has an underground church in Tehran where if he was found, this could be a big deal for him. But when you hear him worship, when you hear him scream hallelujah, it will change the way you worship with the freedoms that we have in this country. He is unabandoned, uh, unbridled, giving everything to the Lord. It's amazing. This is Nasreen. She's called to the nations and to preach the gospel, her and her husband, to the nations. And Armand and Sharza, these people have an amazing church called Kingdom of Heaven in Dennis Lee, Turkey. Oh my God, do they have a testimony. Let me tell you that this is Mo's son and his wife. And they lead a church called New Life and Talia. And you have Daniel, who's my brother. He's amazing. And he is, the Lord reached him in his dreams. I, you know, as I prepared and spent time with God, you know, for the sermon series, and I was in Turkey, it dawned on me. On the first night in Turkey, Ephesus is in Turkey. The Ephesus, I was four hours away from the place called Ephesus that Paul writes the letter to the church in Ephesus called the book of Ephesians. So I decided God is, is trying to teach me something here. And so I started to study this letter that Paul is writing to this church. You know, it's an amazing church located in Turkey. And, and I want you to gravitate towards this. Is Paul is writing this letter and he's in prison. He's shackled. His freedoms have been taken from him. And he is pouring out his heart to a family that he hasn't met yet. But they knew they had one thing in common, Jesus. But he is concerned. He's concerned with the perception of the church. He is concerned with the perception that this new church had between each other, between people, whether it was Jew or Gentile, black or white, Democrat or Republican. Boy, it got quiet in here, didn't it? He's concerned about the ethnic differences between these people. He's concerned about the racial differences in these people. He's concerned about the socioeconomic differences between these people. He is writing to a city that is diverse, that is growing, that is busy, but is so full of tension and brokenness. Can I tell you, it sounds a lot like the city of Houston, don't you think? This letter is written in such a way that it is to reach much more churches. It, it can be read and this message is repeated in the church uh, in Colos, in Philippi, in Thessalonica, and in Corinth. He says the same type of message. As I was reading and I was in Turkey and God began to download this sermon into me. I, I read this verse and I'm going to change it a little bit because it says, I, Paul, under God's divine plan, as an ambassador of Christ, the King, I write this letter to the devoted family of believers in the great city of Houston. And that verse I want to land on today that he prepares us to take in is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. And it reads like this. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members in God's family. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for Paul. We thank you that you took him to evangelize and to spread the gospel the country of Turkey and that today Lord we thank you that you are still very active and alive and moving through the Middle East through Turkey and through Iran Lord. we thank you Lord that your God's given divine plan to us has us here in such a time as this to receive this message that you're giving us the vision you have for this house and for this family Jesus we thank you for the perfect work of the cross Holy Spirit we ask you to guide my, my spirit my words, my thoughts. May you 
inspire us may you encourage us may you teach us but most importantly inward transform us to be different to be people of God God my words help me deliver this message you have downloaded into my spirit and we pray this in Jesus mighty name and the church said Amen. this letter is a Right, and written to a city very similar to ours. It's a city uh, that he is giving, teaching, imparting, encouraging, exhorting, if you will. The gospel message of Jesus to these people. He's reminding them about their salvation, their sanctification, and their sonship in Christ. That's what he's doing. Now, Paul... He goes on exhorting today that Jesus saves, that he spiritually grows us, and that he creates in us a new identity, that we are new people in Christ. Bam, you can go back and read chapters 1 and 2, which, by the way, is a beautiful read. You'll, you'll, you'll be encouraged. You'll learn something new. But basically, it teaches that, right? I'm just kind of cliff noted for you. But he, he ends up and he brings it forward in that we are brought into God's own family which is my message for you today. He lands on this truth, a single truth that I want to talk to you today, that we all have family ties. We have family ties. Now, some of the older people in the room, oh, that was a great show when I was growing up. Telling your age, you're over 45. Or at least over 40. I remember that show. That was the Michael J. Fox for some of y'all. Verse 11, Paul. Paul says, don't, don't forget don't forget we have family ties, y'all. Don't forget that you were once an outsider, you Jew. Don't forget that you were once a sinner. Don't forget that sometimes you've made mistakes too. Don't forget that you have also failed in life. Don't forget, I know I did. Don't forget. Don't forget that Jesus doesn't see you as a mistake don't forget that he has called you his own don't forget that you are his prized possession don't forget that you are his treasure that you're a child of God and that you're an heir to royalty and a kingdom in heaven and I wish I had a church that could celebrate such a truth don't forget we got family ties Verse 16 and 18, he says the following, and allow me to paraphrase it a little bit. I like the way I wrote it better because it fits the context to, to like us today. Paul says, all people have become one people. All people have become one family. A family living a reconciled life found in the body of Christ. No, no, no. Not the crucified life, but the risen life in Christ. Isn't that good? Living out the message of peace. Living out the message of hope. Living out the message of love. That those who are far from him can come in and enjoy a portion of that peace, of that hope, and of that love. We are united to Christ as one family, one people, with one spirit, and one king, and we sit on the throne with him in his kingdom. We have family ties, y'all. Family ties. This is our message here at Union Houston. We are no longer strangers. We belong to heaven, and we are one family. On June 8th of 2008, I was in a treatment facility about a mile and a quarter, a mile and a 1.2 miles away from here. I fully surrendered my life to Jesus that day. And it was in that moment, in that instance, I was no longer an addict. I was no longer a sinner. And I became a citizen in heaven. 
and I was brought into his family. I believe today God has brought some people that have been searching for a family. God has brought someone is here today that has been looking to be no longer something and become a citizen and become a family member in his family. They're here today. They're sitting here. We've been praying, we've been giving, and we've been serving for you. Now, after treatment, I went back to this church we used to go to. About 60 people in the church, a lot of older folk. We love the pastor. The pastor actually married me and Sarah. Pastor Jim's a good friend of ours. We try to eat dinner or breakfast with him from time to time. He's getting a little older. He's about to retire. You know, we loved him. The people were really nice, but... If I could be honest with you, I loved, I loved Jesus so much. I was in love with Jesus. I wanted everything. You know what I'm saying? Like what he had done for me and my family. And so I was all in. But I was a little uncomfortable. <laughs> you see, you imagine me wearing dress pants and dress shoes and a dress shirt. And Sarah would be like, pick out my clothes for me. And then she'd be like, oh, you got to roll down your sleeves because you can see your tattoos. You see, I, listen, I was free, but I didn't feel really free. Man, I was free, but I didn't feel very free. We attended a new church some months later that God put in our path. A, a church that embraced me, a, a church that embraced my family, a church that embraced my, my story. As a matter of fact, the, the pastor on the second service, he walked up to me and instead of shaming me for my tattoos, he says, man, I know you got a story with all them tattoos. I said, boy, you got time? You got time to eat? To talk? Our church family embraced our story. And today we're so thankful for Pastors Tom and Jackie Elmore for taking the call to start a church and bringing us in and embracing us. And can I tell you, that was the day I began to discover a new family. A family not dictated by my last name, but dictated and determined by one name, Jesus. I had lots of friends before I said yes to Jesus. Many of those friends left. Left me, abandoned me, except for one. My jar always checked up on me, always checks up on me, make sure I'm good, how I was doing. Everybody else left me. Can I tell you, I have family members that no longer speak to me. They don't say hi to me. I'll text them, Merry Christmas, Happy Thanksgiving, how are you doing, Merry, nothing. Labeled me a Jesus freak. They said, he's just like that with everything. When he was excited about this, he got went all in. He's just on another bandwagon. Well, I'm here to tell them that bandwagon is a mission. We're on a mission for God. And that mission is called union. And we're not going nowhere. You might want to tell like Kanye says, them demons. This ain't a show. This is a mission. And we're coming after you. All the way in. I found a family not by blood, but by spirit. Now, here's part of my story I want to tell you, though. See, I didn't think I was a racist, but I was because I didn't trust white people. But ain't God funny? He used a bunch of white people <laughs> to be my family, to love me, to embrace me, to not judge me, to show me Jesus. Ain't God good? Now, along the way, I'm so thankful for them because along the way, I started to realize that, you know, God was, my, I was honored that my parents and my siblings saw they embraced the change in me. They started to walk with me. They came in. They're part of this church now. And, and, and some of my friends did too, by the way. If you don't know who Donnell is, you'll see him out there next table. table. He's one of those friends from my childhood that came back and now is part of this family. We used to be friends. Now we're family. And along the way, I gathered more family. That family became a church called Union Houston. In life family, sometimes you don't get along with everybody. We bicker with each other a little bit, but we got family ties. What I love is this, is we're a family dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel ties all of us together in one family. Family ties that say you are no longer stranger, foreigners, or aliens. 
for as long as I can remember, I felt as a foreigner, an alien in my own skin. I, that's part of my story. You know, this is a picture of me. I actually look like an alien when I was little. Look at that head. Boy, nanu, nanu. Look at that boy there. And that belly sticking out. My belly still sticks out sometimes. My wife's like, that shirt's too short. Tuck your belly back in. My head was so big, I think I still wear the, I wore the new era, the fitted cap that I wore back then today. Like, that's how, I used to topple over my head so big. I just, you know. So I felt a little weird. And then when I was six years old, my parents came to the United States in search of freedom. They were in search of a dream, tired of living in a country with rules and dictatorship. And then now we were really foreigners, strangers to a culture, strangers to, to language, to food. And for many years, I was an illegal alien. I, I want to tell you, as a young person, as an eight-year-old boy, I knew exactly what that meant. As an eight-year-old boy, I lived with the pressure that we couldn't go back home because of persecution. But if someone knew that I didn't have papers, I was in trouble. That is an uncomfortable place to be in. You know, I, I, had, I had a heavy accent. You know, anybody that knows me loves that I love chicken. And I love chicken sandwiches, right? And these boys, I used to go to school and I order a chicken sandwich. So guess what the kids did? What y'all did? Laugh at me. I was a foreigner. You know, I, I, I remember going to the park and playing with my mom. My mom used to take us over the summertime. We'd go play baseball or whatever. And, and one time we got, I got into an altercation with another kid or whatever. And I remember driving off and they called us wetbacks. But you know what's crazy is? The people calling me wetbacks had Hispanic surnames. And they were darker than me. I was a stranger and a foreigner amongst my own people. Actually, it was black people that, that liked me. They liked my accent. You see, you see what I'm saying? So like, hey, bring Rodrigo over. He speak a little funny. He's cool. He's really light. He's really light. But there's something cool about him. So I, I you know, I always had black friends. By the grace of God, though, I was able to, we were able to become residents and then Later citizens, thank God my dad pressured us and was like, make sure, no, we got to become citizens and this is a great nation. And, and I was able to get rid of my accent, most of it. And by the way, sometimes when I'm really like upset or something, I say something in an in in accent, my wife just looks at me, oh, you just said that was an accent. Okay, thank you, ma'am. This is not my first tongue. <laughs> but that's a horrible feeling to feel that you don't feel in your own, this is home. I'm not going back anywhere. I'm not moving away from Houston. And yet I felt as a stranger in my own home. There are 3 million plus people in the city of Houston that feel like strangers. There are 3 million plus people that according to the law, they are unwanted, unworthy of God's grace and his love. They are foreigners to this family. Because they don't attend a church. They may not know that the gospel of Jesus is for all people. Can I tell you, God gave me this verse. He said, for God so loved Houston, Texas, that he gave his only begotten son. So that those that come to me and believe shall have eternal life and shall not perish. Family ties for the city of Houston. We need a shirt that says, for God so loved Houston, Texas. How many of y'all like that? All right, Andre, get to work. The message says, you are no longer strangers. This message is about that we're no longer strangers. We are no longer conforming, but transforming. We are no longer alone, for he is near to us. We are no longer worthless, because to him we are invaluable. We are no longer with that which we used to label ourselves with. 
because he's called us his own. A child of God, a prized possession, worthy to be given his life for, a holy people, a royal priesthood, people that stand on the throne and sit with him. Heirs of heaven, a free people. How Kanye puts in his album says, John 8, 3, 6, for who the sun sets free is oh, much better than 11, 15. That 9.30 was asleep and obviously not a hip-hop fans. <laughs> you haven't heard that song, I don't know what you're doing. Jesus came, lived, died, and was raised back to life to begin a new family. His family. It's called the church. And here at Union Houston, we believe in that this family is called to reach all people always. So that when we welcome them in, we welcome them in not as strangers or foreigners or aliens, but as family. Family. Now Paul also says though in Ephesians 2.19, he says, you are citizens along with all of God's holy people. That means that we are citizens of all, with all of God's holy people going back to Adam and Eve and Moses and Abraham and Noah. He, he's declaring that we are all part of that same family. And that the gospel of Jesus is for all people always. It doesn't matter of the past, the failures and the mistakes. His message is that we are citizens in his kingdom. Now this is where it gets good. A holy people, one family, one people. We are citizens in the kingdom of heaven. Paul's message to the world and all of the church is this, and it, truth be told, hasn't changed. He repeats this message to the church in Philippi, and he says, we are citizens of heaven. And Jesus says it in John 14 and Luke 22 that he is preparing a kingdom for us. For us. And then in 1 Peter 1, 4, he, Peter says that we have reservations in heaven. The truth is unchanging no matter where you look at it. Now the law required some rigorous demands for us to be right standing with God. But Jesus paid all those debts. He made it right for all mankind, for all sins, for all eternity. And it doesn't matter who you are, all people are included. Jesus did this so that anybody that believes in him and his message shall be saved. No strings attached, no fine print, no extra loopholes, right? But here's the part that's really important for us today. Is that we're given citizenship in the kingdom of heaven. A kingdom that has no end. Now watch this. Did you know just like when I became a citizen of this nation, I garnered some rights. I could vote. Right? I could do some things now. I didn't have to fear. I'm talking to someone today. I, don't, I didn't have to fear that I would get thrown away or casted out. I was in like fleeing, as they say. Did you know that when you give your life to Jesus, you have some rights and some authority that's given to you when you become a citizen of heaven? I'm here to declare that some of you have been walking and don't know you have rights and authority. You have supernatural governmental authority to shift the atmosphere. When we pray in Jesus' name, it ain't a religious thing. It's to move. Our faith moves mountains. Our faith changes lives. Our faith restores the cities. This is why prayer is our lifeline here at Union Houston. This is why we're always praying. We'll never stop praying. Because we believe that God manifests himself in the miracles that are around us. And Charles and Melissa, in the first service, my granddaughter stood right there. A miracle. Sometimes, if you just really pay attention, you'll see God in the miracles that are all around you. Families being restored. More Charles's will be healed of cancer like he was. Miracle children like my granddaughter and many other will be born. People's minds will be reset and renewed. New identities will go forth. 
found in Christ and not in the world transforming and not conforming people being healed when heaven and its citizens come into this place and they gather and they worship and they lift high the name above all names his name is Jesus you know what happens you become a weapon because worship worship is pointed at the enemy and all the demons are shaking right now they're trembling because you are dangerous to them because the darkness knows that there is no doubt there is no anxiety, there is no worry, there is no depression that can exist when we are praising Jesus. When you are singing, every knee shall bow. What worry can happen? Family ties, as citizens of heaven, we have the power in the authority of heaven inside of us it's time to use that citizenship and begin to change moods around you in your workplace in your neighborhoods in your own blood family begin to worship Jesus and pray for them and serve them and love them unconditionally The vision of this family is for all people. And this place that we call home is called so that we all live in the fullness of God that changes this world. And finally, Paul says in Ephesians 2.19, you are members in God's family. Now, I want to tell you that the vision of this house and this family is the message of Jesus. The message of Jesus is that Jesus was in heaven, nice and cozy. But he loved his creation so much that he stepped outside of the throne of heaven. And he came, came to live amongst us, amongst human beings, amongst broken people, amongst the hurting, amongst the dirty, amongst the shameful, amongst the messy. And he wasn't ashamed of them. He touched them. He fed them. He healed them. He raised them from the dead. And today, that is the message that we're giving you. That is the message here. We will feed, heal, and raise people to life. There are purposes being raised to life. There are dreams being raised to life. There are new callings, anointings, and purposes that are being raised to life. And anyone that believes in, in this infallible, unchanging, and eternal truth has family ties. You are no longer a stranger. No different than a, a Christian that's been a Christian all their life. You are citizens in his kingdom. We are members of the same family. We are members of one family, God's family. To our brothers and sisters that will one day watch this YouTube video in Iran, we love you, we haven't met you, but you are family. We have family ties. This is plain and clear. Our message and union exist for all people always, so that they know that they are no longer wandering exiles, looking for hope, looking for life, looking for love, no longer a slave to the tricks of the enemy and the lies he tells us. That there's a kingdom of faith that we belong to, that this is our home country now, heaven, that we're no longer strangers, foreigners, or aliens. We don't need a green card for this one. You belong here. Just as anybody else that calls themselves Christian. Even if today is the day you say yes, you're automatically in. You don't got to do anything else. What he is building is his church. And his church here is called Union Houston. Our city is diverse. But it's also diverse in pain and suffering. Every color, every race, every tribe, every tongue. 
struggles with the same things. Hurting people are all around us. And we, as citizens of heaven, are called to be the helping people to the hurting people of this beautiful and amazing city that we call Houston, Texas. Now, if you're new, we want you to start the process, right? Today's you Connect. As soon as this service is over, go out there, ask them for step one. You'll get to know a little bit about what your next steps are, what it means to say yes to Jesus, and what this church is all about. There'll be squad members there. The other thing you can do is you can start attending our U group. It's our small groups. We believe growth happens in the context of relationship. And we want you to know that you have a new family waiting for you in a small group where you can ask all the questions because Pastor Rod has some really dumb questions when he first came into church. And that's where I worked them out, y'all. That's where we got to work out the dumb questions. We all got them. It's okay. There, you know what the, dumb, the dumbest question is? The one you don't ask. Ask away. Jesus gave us his church to be his bride. Did you know that? The Bible tells us he, the church is his bride. We're in a close-knit relationship. No longer conforming to the ways of this world, he tells the church in Rome but transforming by renewing our minds and what we think about, how we view ourselves, what we used to be, but rather what he calls us. That we are continually looking to be righteous and pure, taking out the dirty, taking out the messy, and pouring in the good. That we delight in serving our King Jesus. That we give truth to all those that seek it. We set our hearts on reaching the nations in India, Turkey, and Iran. That we wrap ourselves in righteousness and the purity of the gospel. That we might be wrapped in strength, and courage, faith. That we radiate into dark places the light that is in us. That we radiate the hope to the despair that is in our city and in our neighborhoods, that we give off an incense of faith and of love and of mercy and of compassion, that we are known as strong and unafraid, that we are known as bold, that we are known as attractive, that we are known as the irresistible people of God. We are prayer warriors. We are atmospheres changers when we worship him. We are clothed in a multi-garment color, multicolored garment of different races, different backgrounds, and even different messes that we brought in. And we display it to glorify the one who saved us, restored us, and redeemed us. We are a people that walk in triumph, we are a people that fight from victory and not for victory. We are God's family in this city, in this nation, and in the world. And we are determined to take back all of it from the grips of the enemy. Would you stand with me this afternoon? Prayer partners and leaders up to the front, please. God saying to you, I feel God's on the move today. I feel God's bringing new family members forth. And so can we have everyone bow their heads and close their eyes and honor the moment that God wants to have with his new family members today? And so today I'm going to offer you a chance to step into his family, a family that declares that Jesus stepped away from heaven. He walked on earth. He was betrayed, beaten, mocked, was crucified, died, buried, but on the third day he rose again. And when he did, he fulfilled the promise that anyone that believes in him will have eternal life and shall not perish. And so if that's you, with every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking around the room, would you raise your hand? Shoot it up, shoot it up so I can pray for you. Come on now, shoot it up. That's it. Come on now. Thank you, Father, for the hands that are raised. Father. We thank you, Lord, that you are bringing forth salvation. There's more hands coming up. That's all right. Keep them coming up. I'm praying for you. God knows. He's, Lord, you're bringing new family members into your kingdom, Lord. Making them citizens of heaven. No longer strangers. No longer foreigners. And inside, you're bringing them to a, a family of the gospel. 
We thank you, Lord Jesus, for today. We thank you for the lives that are being transformed. We thank you for the new family members, Lord. May you anoint them. May you guide them in their steps, Lord. We thank you for today. We pray this in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Thank you for watching this message. For more videos, check out our channel. And make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for notifications on all new videos.